Hi everyone, it's been a while, but we are back with a new video today. I want to share with you this beautiful little hack for the reversible swimsuit. It's originally a swim top, but I decided to make it in this cute little um, rib knit since, you know, it's no longer reversible and I don't really uh, want to do it with swim right now. But anyways, I thought it would be super cute for an everyday top. But look at this. The hack is adding these little cute circle sleeves, flares sleeves, butterfly sleeves, whatever you want to call them. Someone was kind enough to share their makes in the Lowland group and share with us that they just added some circle sleeves right here to the little arms and it makes it such a cute top. I wish I knew who to give credit for that originally made this hack. But if you do know them, uh, give them a shout out below because they are, what's it called? They are breaking the internet. I just posted this top and someone already requested for a little video tutorial. And let me tell you, it's super easy. Like, this is going to be the fastest top you make this summer because it's just that easy. But especially towards the end, you know how usually in the swim pattern you have to leave a little opening and then you have to figure out a way to close it and make it still look nice? Like, you don't have to do that here. Like, it's going to be so easy, so fun. So cute in all of these swim prints if you want to do, if you want to do some everyday prints, my arm is getting tired. <laughs> but anyways, let's just go right ahead. On with the hack. Okay, so to start, uh, you will need the Lowland reversible swim top pattern, just like this. Today, I decided to cut out the crop back. It has like a bikini uh, length and a crop length. The crop is longer, so that's what I'm going to do today. But all you need is the back piece and the front piece and then for the circle sleeve I decided to get this free one by Petite Stitchery I'll try to include the link down below but this is absolutely free and it has all sizes from baby all the way to adult like um, plus sizes so that is the biggest size range ever but it's so awesome so go ahead and get those uh, patterns if you don't have them already Again, links will be down below. Let's get a little, a little closer here. I'm actually going to show y'all how I'm going to cut this out if you need any help cutting. But if you don't need help cutting, go ahead and skip forward to the actual sewing. But today, we're going to be using another beautiful floral. I'm just all about the florals. Always have been. But today we're going to be using this beautiful floral. I'm bringing out, um, I used it last spring. It's time to use it again. So here we go into the cutting. I actually prefer to cut out these uh, two pieces first. For this one, we are going to have to cut two sets of opposites. So when it says opposites, you already know. You just got to you gotta fold your fabric as if you're going to cut on the fold. But instead, we are going to cut two opposites. So I'm going to try to figure out the best way to cut this so that I can cut all four at once. If you don't know me, if, you've, if you're new to my channel, we always do the quick and dirtiest method. <laughs> Sorry, that came out wrong. We always do the quickest <laughs> methods. But I call them my quick and dirty methods because sometimes they're a little frowned upon in the sewing community, but that's okay. So anyways, for this set, I am going to just figure out how wide I need my fabric to be and then double that so that in the end it'll be four times the width of one piece, if that makes sense. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and fold it and then I'll show you how I'm cutting it. Okay, so just like I mentioned, I just folded my fabric so that I'll get four pieces. And since it's folded, we are already going to get those opposites. Opposite just means that it mirrors it, you know, kind of like my hands, left and right, they're opposites. So when they lay together, you have one for each side. Sorry, my nails are kind of long and gross. <laughs> but here we go. Now I'm just going to hop over my little tripod and just cut this out how I normally would all around. There is no fold, so remember that for this part of the pattern. And if you have, you know... A nice sharp blade, you shouldn't have any issues going around that little curve. I feel like I recently saw a post, sorry my arm is in the way. I feel like I recently saw a post of someone saying that they had trouble going around curves. I haven't had that issue with my rotary cutter. But it could be the style maybe they were using. I really 
like this 0 for 1, 45, you know. But again, we just have all four layers over here. Good to go. Bam. And like I said, four layers. Quick and dirty. Done with that. Now all we need is two sets of the front bodice. Now I do want to note, or I should have noted this before, if you're doing two different patterns, you'll only want two of each. So one set of each. So one set of, like maybe, let's say you're doing a floral one and a solid, but I'm just going to go ahead and do both for my drop. And then one of each for this. So again, if you're doing like two different fabrics or you want to save on fabric or something, Oh, that's one way to do it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use all the same pattern because again, it it's not it's no longer reversible now. So again, I'm just gonna fold my fabric so that I get my two little pieces cut out all at once. I have this actual scrap piece left over from another project, so it might be just what we need. Bam! Perfect. Do you see that? So again. With this one cut, we're going to have two pieces. And make sure that everything is nice and on the fold. And bam, going around. Look at that curve. <laughs> I don't know, ever since I saw that post, I'm like, my thing goes over curves. So get yourself a rotary cutter if you, or one of these if you have issues with those curves. But okay, now we have two pieces. All that's left to do is cut the circle sleeves out and we'll be done. Again, I like to get the most out of my folds, so I'm going to fold my fabric so that I can cut two of these at once. So we're going to need two sleeves. The only thing that I'm worried about is this is a directional print, but it's like a really pretty floral, so I don't think it'll matter that much. So I'm just going to figure out how tall it needs to be. And then once I figure that out, I usually, once I figure out how tall it needs to be, I usually just measure out, um, you guys can't see me, hold on. I usually just measure out how wide two sleeves would be, and then that's where I fold it. And then I fold that in half. So I'm going to go ahead and get this fabric all situated. So again, I fold it there, bring it over. And we're going to fold it once more, and then we'll have those two circles, hopefully. Have it wide enough for two. And it's slightly short, so let me go ahead and refold it, but that's exactly how I do it when I'm doing two circles. And you might be thinking, like, Carla, how is it faster if you're having to refold and stuff? Like, just believe me, it is. <laughs> like, anytime I see factory videos, they're always cutting multiple layers of fabric, you know? So now I'm just going to cut this bigger circle and a note for y'all, the middle is a little small, um, especially if you're using the petite stitch tree. So I just cut my circle pattern just a tad larger. So if you notice the opening is a little too small, that's where that's gonna come in handy. Just make it a little bigger. You could even make it a little bigger after you cut. I think it's not gonna, it's not gonna matter that much. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to clean up these little edges here. For some reason, I always miss these little, or I always get these little divots at the end. Okay, now we have our two circles and the rest of everything. So now let's go on to the sewing portion. And we're actually going to switch rooms. So let's go over to where my sewing room is at. Okay, so just set your circle sleeves aside. That's literally the last step. Um, but first, we are going to grab our front pieces like this and just lay both out. I guess it doesn't matter, but I just like to lay them all out. And then you're going to want to have the straps going towards the inside. But you also want the print to touch each other. So right sides together and make sure the strap is inside so you'll lay it like this. It does look a little funky because the tops, you know, don't really line up. 
but that's okay. They will once you sew them. And do the same for the top. And we are going to go ahead and sew the shoulders together. So you have four points to sew. One, two, three, four. And then we'll be back. I'm just using my serger one fourth seam allowance. Okay, once that step is done, you just need to put everything right sides together. So I'm just gonna pull it up here so y'all can see. So it's gonna look something like that, <laughs> kind of crazy. And then you just put the other one right sides together, matching everything up. And the next step is, let me get my little pointer. And by pointer, I mean my scissors. <laughs> we are going to actually sew everything on the inside. So I don't know if this actually matters, but I left, I still left a little gap here. And I went all the way up, around, 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 throughout the whole neck. Da -da 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 -da. And then again, I did like a little stopping point. Again, I'm not sure if that even really mattered toward the end, but I'm just going to do it how I did it the first time. And if you're worried about these little curves, you can, you can literally just, bam, surge off. And then, you know, clip the end or whatever, and then keep going. But I didn't really find it that hard to maneuver around that. So all you need to do again is just sew all over the inside and then I'll come back with the next step. All right, so here is what that looks like all sewn up. So now all you need to do is turn like these like straps inside out. So I literally just grab one and push it with my fingers like this, you know, just to get it out. And, you know, something like this. And do the same thing with the other side, and then we're going to turn it all right side out so that it looks like a top. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. But okay, I have these little ends, and then you just kind of, you know, flip the front, or one side of the front, and kind of get your, your shape going. So now it's all right side out like this-ish. And now what we're going to do is sew the right sides, or the side seams together. So what I like to do in this step is just bring this whole piece forward. So I'm just going to bring it forward like this. And the pieces that touch together first. Did y'all hear that? That is a ghost that just slammed my door. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's the, it's the hot air. What is that called? The heater. The hot air heater. That thing that blows hot air. Anyways. So then I just know that these sides that are touching are going to be sewn first. So if y'all want to get a clip or something, because when I first did this, I got a little confused and sewed the wrong ones together, but all you need to know are the ones touching on the inside, you can even bring this one up because that one doesn't matter right now, the ones touching on the inside are the ones we're going to sew together first. So again, you can even like pin it loosely because, I mean, you're just going to be lining these up anyway, but just loosely pin it and then you'll know. All right, got it. Got to sew those together. And then if you want to bring this side over to the other end, you can. Sorry, that was confusing. Hold on. Sometimes when I do these crazy maneuvers, it doesn't make sense. But then you bring it to the other side and this little floppy piece you bring to the front. You feel me? Now these two are touching, and again, you can do little clippy clips, so little pinny pin, so you don't mess them up. I don't know what's going on with me today. I'm in a silly, goofy mood, but there you go. So now you know that you need to sew these two together that we just pinned, and then these two together. Why can I not stay in frame? <laughs> and then these two, and then the other. So you have four sides to, four side seams to put together, but you got this, I know you can do it. And then once that's done, I'll come back. So I just turned it all right side out again, and you got something like this going on. You're gonna wanna find the bottom of the top, like the whole bottom, and you're gonna wanna put everything inside of it. So like here is, the opening 
just put everything inside that opening essentially you're turning everything inside out so that you have this long piece so it should just look like this it kind of looks like underwear now <laughs> like, do you all see those two little openings but okay you have this whole opening and you're just gonna serge it all the way closed so normally you would leave an opening but we don't gotta do that today we just gotta serge all the way over oh my gosh there's a car outside I already ordered my food today, so it's not that, but it's kind of sketch. Anyways, I'll do that and come back. Okay, so we closed it all up. I don't even bother with these threads because they're all going to be on the inside anyway. And then you just pick any hole and start grabbing the right side out. Bam. And then kind of shake it out so it grabs its shape. And now this is what your top looks like. But we have these little armholes for our circle sleeves. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my circle sleeves. This is where you would um, have to change things a little bit if, depending on if you did one print or two. Like if you want it to be your lining, keep it on the inside. Do you know what I mean? But since mine is the same in both directions, it doesn't really matter for me. But whichever side you decide you want to be the right, like, out-facing print, keep that on the outside. Hopefully that didn't confuse anybody. But okay, now I'm going to take my bell sleeve. And again, this print was directional, so it kind of confuses me a little bit, but we're just going to go for it. And this outside... We're just going to put this here, right? And then I'm going to put this over. So all we're going to do is serge all three layers together. So you should have the two layers of your armhole and then the layer of your bell sleeve. And you're just going to serge it all. It's like serging... Um, What's that sleeve called? Well, it's just like searching a sleeve on. I don't know how else to say it. But okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that for both sides, and then we'll be done. Okay, here's the top off finish. Now all that's left to do is tie the ones in the middle. I actually prefer to tie it upside down. I don't know why, but I just find that it works for me to tie it upside down. Just a normal tie though. And then it usually comes out to like where they lay nice. I don't know, maybe that's just me. <laughs> Here is the final top. I feel like they look better on a hanger, but. Here is the final look. I am going to try and get pictures. Rogue threads. Um, but I'm sure it's going to look absolutely cute. And everything, and I really like the size of this circle sleeve, so if you decide to get this pattern, it's literally perfect. <laughs> so I can't wait to see everyone make this top, and happy sewing, everyone.